is up you guys gold pony here today in the 2018 hyundai elantra gt courtesy of jack g and bobo hyundai in york pa and so this one is exciting because for 2018 the elantra gt has been completely redesigned with a european influence definitely for the better so without further ado let's start with pricing and so to start the standard gt six speed is going to start at nineteen thousand three hundred fifty dollars six speed automatic and that one starts at twenty thousand three hundred fifty dollars then there is the sport paired up with a manual transmission for twenty three thousand two hundred fifty dollars and the sport paired up with the dual clutch which which is the one I have today. That is gonna start at $24,350. And now said there are gonna be two different engine setups for the 2018 Elantra GT. And so the first setup belonging to the standard GT is gonna be powered by a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, putting out 161 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 150 pound feet of torque available at 4,700 RPM. Power is going to be sent to the front wheels through your choice of either a six-speed manual or a six-speed automatic. And when it comes to miles per gallon on that one, with the manual transmission, you get 23 city, 31 highway, and the automatic gives you 24 in the city, 32 on the highway. But the one I have today is the sport setup. So that one is going to be powered by a 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine, putting out 201 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 195 pound-feet of torque. And that power band is going to be good from 1500 to 4500 rpm and so but then once again power is going to be sent to the front wheels on this one through either a six speed manual transmission or a seven speed dual clutch transmission with paddle shifters which i will be testing out a little bit of course but when it comes to miles per gallon on that one you're going to get 22 city 29 highway for the manual and 26 city 32 highway for the dual clutch and so but then if you slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is actually going to give you full control over the shifting in the launcher gt and so now it is about time let's give the paddle shifters a shot here and see how quickly they react for us actually pulls pretty hard it's pretty quick and the paddle shifters aren't that bad actually Hyundai has definitely improved with that not the quickest paddle shifters ever but definitely still fun to use they're not slow anymore so that is a good thing and so but another thing that makes this one a little bit more fun is there is a drive mode button just to the left of the shifter there and so if you hit that you have your choice between normal and sport driving modes <laughs> And so with the sport driving mode, it is going to adjust things like the throttle response and the shift points if you are not shifting through the gears yourself, of course. And that, of course, does make this one a lot more fun to drive. And so but now carving through the back roads here, as far as the suspension setup goes, there is a McPherson strut front suspension with coil springs. And in the back, there is a multi-link independent rear suspension if you go with the sport trim again, the one I have today. And comparing it to the previous generation Elantra GT, this new one does come with an 18% increase in torsional rigidity, so that is definitely going to help with handling as well. And then when it comes to visibility, this is a smaller vehicle, so there really is no issues with visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back there. But now, let's do a quick little acceleration here in sport mode without the paddle shifters. We'll see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing pulls really, really hard. I am very impressed with that. Being a front wheel drive car, this thing definitely pins you in the back of your seat and it is quite fun to drive. But with quicker cars, braking is equally important. And so up front of the standard GT, you have 11 inch ventilated discs. And if you go with the sport trim, that one is gonna come standard with 12 inch ventilated discs. And so but now enough of the driving dynamics, you guys, let's check out the exterior. And so up front, there is that Hyundai signature cascading front grille, definitely looks good up there. To the sides, LED daytime running lights do come standard for every trim level. Projector headlights are gonna come standard on the GT while full LED headlights are standard on the Sport and these full LED headlights are available for the standard GT through a $4,300 tech package. Then making our way to the side, standard GT comes with body colored power adjustable side mirrors. Integrated turn signals come with the Sport and are available through the GT through an $1,800 style package. And for all trim levels there are chrome window surrounds and when it comes to the wheel setup, standard GT is going to give you 17 inch alloy wheels, Sport trim is going to give you 18 inch alloy wheels. But then making our way to the back, all trim levels are going to come with a rear window wiper as well as a rear spoiler back there. And if you go with the Sport, LED taillights come standard as well. But then, just below it all, all trim levels are going to get split dual exhaust outlets. So, as always, you guys, here is that exhaust clip. When it 
comes to how to open that rear hatch, there actually is a button on the key fob here. So I'm going to show you guys that, but that is going to unlock that rear hatch for you. And once unlocked, as far as cargo capacity goes, that is going to come in at 24.9 cubic feet. And if that was not quite enough space, you can fold those rear seats down, bumping the cubic feetness up to 55.1. And when it comes to the rear seat legroom, that comes in at 34.8 inches. So for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I going on back there. And there is a rear armrest with cup holders back there as well. And rear ventilation if you go with the sport trim. Again, it's going to be optional on the standard GT as well. It's over then making your way to the front seats. The standard GT is going to give you manually adjustable cloth seats. Sport trim is going to give you heated leather trim to power adjustable front seats with lumbar support. And so, but then when it comes to the startup, let me show you guys the key here because the key is redesigned as well believe it or not on the one side you got your hyundai logo of course but then when you flip it over you do have lock unlock and the unlock button for the rear hatch as well but it is all actually keyless access on this sport trim that i have today so all you need to do is simply put your foot on the brake and press that engine start button. And so upon startup, it's going to show you a really sweet looking picture of the Elantra GT front and center. Tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a digital display front and center. And of course, you can adjust what's on that digital display if you wanted to by using the steering wheel mounted controls there. And so through that, you can choose to display things like a digital speedometer setup up there. You have your trip A and trip B information, as well as your average fuel economy up there as well. And then also you can find your tire pressure for each individual individual tire and then you have your settings you could scroll through as well but i'm gonna leave it on the digital speedometer for now because that is what i leave it on my own personal hyundai so we'll leave it at that and move on to overall interior quality of this one i do want to first mention there is a sunglass holder up top there and if you look forward there is a 12 volt power outlet as well for the sport trim that does come standard with alloy pedals sport trim is also going to add dual zone climate control so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures there and if you wanted to go with the tech package again forty three hundred dollars for the standard gt it's a around 3600 for the sport that is going to add a panoramic sunroof as well but now speaking of tech when it comes to the tech display front and center there is a floating eight inch color touchscreen display for all trim levels definitely nice there it does come standard with android auto and apple carplay meaning if you have a smartphone and you hook it up via usb you do have access to google maps which is the best navigation system in my opinion but also you have access to pandora so you can like and dislike your songs up there as well and you have access to iHeartRadio and a couple apps up there too but again if you go with that tech package there is factory navigation that comes with that one also standard is going to be bluetooth and audio streaming and standard sound system is going to come with six speakers but tech package is going to add an affinity premium audio system with seven speakers and a subwoofer but since i do not have that tech package today i have the six speaker setup so we're just going to turn on the radio here and test out the clarity of this one Actually, you guys, a good bit of bass for a six speaker sound system there. Definitely enough loudness for a smaller vehicle like this. So it is definitely working well for the Elantra GT. Very impressed with the bass on the standard setup there. So, but anyways, last thing I did want to mention on that screen is when you do put the vehicle in reverse, there is a reverse camera with dynamic grid lines, letting you know who or what is behind you. So you don't go running anything or anyone over, which as always is going to lead me into safety. So to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags. There is a driver's knee airbag up there as well. In the back, there is latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also standard is electronic stability control and traction control. Sport trim is going to add a blind spot detection system with rear cross traffic alert. And if you go with one of the tech packages for either trim, you are going to also get smart cruise control with start stop capability, an auto dimming rear view mirror, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, lane keep assist, high beam assist, and driver attention alert, which I first noticed with Mercedes Benz. It basically monitors your driving habits and it can then detect when you start to get drowsy and alerts you through visual and audible warning so you don't go crashing the car or falling asleep at the wheel definitely a nice safety feature there and so but anyways that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching be sure to like the video and subscribe feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom there and i will see you guys in the next video stay gold